Ah, yes, Prabhakar, you can share now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So this is a, a, one of my friend's sister. Uh, they did not have kid for eight years past. From, uh, last time when they conceived, baby was uh, in deformed state. They had to abort the baby. Uh, so the family was broken and all that. But as we were praying, all of us like God showed uh, uh, two months, like December and May. We were thinking, uh, why two months? God is showing. He is supposed to show us one month. This is a month. Or something next is going to happen. And one of my other friend also, he, he, he saw like double portion. Something. And then uh, uh, they had no hope. Fleshly, it was impossible. And then they tried an IV booster. So when they did, uh, she got conceived. And this was like five months or something. Last time when they did the scan, the baby was normal. And they're doing you very good. And now the point is now, whole family is happy, and God is glorified here. Uh, so I, I, we cannot say this is true only because of medical or something, because even before uh, medical and all that, God showed to them that it is possible. Or something. So this is definitely glorified God. So that is the testimony. Yes, sure, sure, Prabhakar. Thank you for sharing that. So, see, ultimately, I think it's about the word that God uh, gives, right, regarding uh, a matter. Like in the case of Abraham, I think he didn't go by that word. He he let uh, a human thought or a human understanding dictate terms in between, which is what caused the birth of Ishmael. Uh, but as long as we're holding on to God's word and if you know, God's purpose is fulfilled. Uh, like you, we're talking about medical help. It, it is fulfilled in that manner. Uh, it's okay. And uh, as you shared, you know, it definitely does glorify God. And we thank God for that. And also Susan uh, sharing that, uh, you know, uh, some of her doubts were cleared. So, uh, yeah, that's wonderful, Susan. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, Christopher, you have a, a comment to make? Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah. As um, as as we're talking about the uh, IVF, uh, uh, not that I want to you know continue the, continue the, the discussion too much on that area, but uh, but on the flip side, uh, and really it's really the flip side. If if, we, if uh, people use uh, you know contraception to you know, to prevent uh, uh, you know the birth of of children. Um, versus, you know, a natural, uh, natural way of doing it. Uh, I think that again is using uh, medical technology, medical, uh, you know, means of being able to um, prevent that to happen. And if if there are valid reasons for, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, delay. Uh, so just wanted to understand your view on that. So that is just one point. Uh, the other one is just about um you know uh, you know the place of mary uh in the entire sort of you know uh, way uh, she is represented in the in the in the church um uh, you know obviously there is you know there are denominational churches who have uh, placed her at, 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 at a much higher pedestal and uh you know they even have gone to the extent of saying that you know that she is she is she was She's remained a virgin, you know, through uh, through her uh, through her entire life, which again, you know, the Bible is not really it does not I mean refutes that. So, um, but I, I think given that you know this was a, a miracle that you know brought uh, you know the Son of God, I mean Jesus uh, into the world, just like we have uh, you know. Prophets uh, like Isaiah and you know Moses and you know there are. Uh, is there any, any is is there any sort of special place uh, you know for Mary? Um, uh, not that we have, not that we could pray to her, but um, uh, there is. Uh, I mean, is there a special place? And you know, there is a view also that you know, just like we, you know, if we were to uh, have people intercede for us on the earth. 
uh, you know so for example if i were to ask for you know ask uh, you know pastor you know you pastor you know pastor ashish to pray for something specific uh, so in a way we are we are we are, we are sort of you know, having uh, your intercede uh, you know you know for for me you know, for, for this prayer request so in a similar way do can we have some can we actually have someone who's 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 uh, who has a special place uh, on the earth or uh, yeah, not on the earth but in, in, in the church can we have that person intercede so we don't pray to them but we ask them to intercede so just want to understand the history of you on, on both these points Yes, sure, uh, Christopher. Very, um, uh, you know, very thought-provoking questions. So the first one, right? The first one is about contraception. You you said, okay, is it okay to, um, uh, you know, use go the medical route for contraception? Uh, what I would say is, like I, um, uh, what I would say is, see. Uh, like scriptures tell us like if you look at psalm 139 i think verses 14 through 16 where the psalmist writes you have knit me together in my mother's womb i'm fearfully like you made my in inner uh, invert parts i'm fearfully and wonderfully made and also jeremiah when you uh, see god talking about jeremiah he says that i've called you from when you were in your mother's womb so we know that uh, 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 like a baby that is formed right uh, now that is recognized by god as a person as a person so uh, contrary to what you know we're going into too many details here like you know people say okay uh, what if you you choose not to you know have uh, that child um, like by your own will like naturally you don't lose the child but you you do something to to kind of get rid of that child uh biblically that wouldn't be wrong because we know that once a child is created in the womb it's recognized by god as a person and that a child has a spirit okay so uh when we talk about contraception like my understanding is you know anything that uh uh, prevents the the formation of the child like once it has come to that stage and then you know you're trying to abort it that wouldn't be wrong but any uh you know medical intervention uh you know i um i, I hope you get my point right so there there isn't anything wrong with um you know other things for contraception so that that is what i would say mm, and uh, now coming to the question about mary uh, it, it, should she have a special place i think yes i think so uh, of course she's a ordinary human being like all the other ordinary human beings in the bible who were used by god any prophet or you know anyone uh, so uh, she's ordinary but at the same time you know we do revere we say oh elijah the prophet elisha the prophet uh, moses who led god's people so we honor them for the way in which god used them so in that manner for us to honor mary for what god did through her life i don't see anything wrong with that so we can honor her just to that extent you know not put her on a pedestal now the uh, the connected uh, question my thoughts uh, christopher is when we talk about intercession it is only us here on the earth people who are alive uh, who are children of god you know those who are born again we carry that authority and that dominion so when we intercede for another li living person it it makes sense but now if we depend on somebody like you know mary now she is not a living human being so once you're dead you don't you you cannot exercise your your authority so there's no point asking mary to intercede for us or in that manner any other saint who has already gone to be with the lord they cannot engage in intercession for us because the bible is quite clear that those of us who are alive and we are in the body of christ we are the ones who can co-labor in prayer with god so uh, does my explanation address your questions yes yes thank you okay sure yes thank you thank you okay okay tarun says jesus is the high priest we don't depend on other priests yeah 
Sure. Yes, Tarun. So Jesus is our high priest also. So he's interceding. Um, he's engaged in intercessory prayer in heaven right now for us. Okay. Excellent. Um, uh, any other any other clarifications before we move forward, or can we go to the next uh, section? Okay. So we'll. Okay, Anita. Yes, yes, Anita. Please you can ask. Ma'am, I just had a doubt. So when we say about uh, IVF taking IVF IVF treatment, would be right or wrong? In that mm -hmm. perspective, can we connect it to like uh, if we have cancer or something, people go for the medical treatment. Yeah. So in that case, would it be the same like that? That we like when we are having the problem with uh, childbearing, we go for IVF. Would it be the same like that? I it's think yes. I think yes, Anita. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, so Anita, see, we could go deeper into all this, all right, uh, but uh, I wouldn't want to do that. But just the premise on which I'm saying is, see, if, if there's a married couple, okay, husband and wife, they are married. Uh, when you look at scripture, like even when you look at the book of Genesis, when God blessed Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful, multiply and be fruitful. So it's a given, that blessing is a given. So if the husband and wife want to have a child and they have not had a child and then they uh, go for you know medical uh, medical means to see that blessing there's nothing wrong because you're still going by god's blessing on your life which says be fruitful and multiply so just one you know thought there yeah okay uh, beth is saying several extra fertilizers but only few are used so that means some that are fertilized are thrown away at what point is a person a person okay interesting okay. but um yeah thank you for that question very very important question there with the spirit okay yeah 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 you're right you're right i haven't really thought about that beth honestly so um uh, if you're okay with this i could think this through uh, and maybe you know also check with uh, some other believers who can comment on this and then share my thoughts. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Let me make a note of that question. Okay. All right. Yes. So let's uh, continue with our subject here. We are at chapter four. Yeah. Uh, and this, again, is very important for a kingdom builder because we, we so far we said we have to be directed by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit communicates to us. Now, the Holy Spirit generally communicates to us by putting something in our hearts. So it can be an idea, it can be a thought, it can be a purpose, it can be a goal, it can come in the form of a word, it can come in the form of a picture, an image, uh, or it can be a dream. So we, we receive communication in all these forms. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we are just going to term it a vision. Okay, in, in our discussion. So now let's not get too technical that, oh, this is not exactly a vision. But basically, your what God wants you to do, we are referring to that as a vision in our discussion now. Uh, in Acts 16, 19, you know, Paul, when he is um, uh, talking about his, his uh, life, he says, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So whatever God communicated to uh, Paul, he he strived in his life to remain faithful to that, and that is what we are also called to do. And how does God communicate uh, what He wants us to do? In Acts chapter two, we've seen you know, the Holy Spirit when it was poured out uh, on the day of Pentecost, when the church was born. God gave the church, you know, dreams and visions and communication by the working of the Holy Spirit, and that's how we pick up these purposes or the vision that God has for each one of us and our individual ministry 
in the body of Christ, whatever that is. But one thing we are clear, every single one of us is called to serve in one way or the other. We just need to know what that is and we have to do it. Okay, so this God-given vision or the prompting of God, we will discuss about that. We will get some insight about the God-given vision. The God-given vision is a divine command and an authorization. So we looked at the fact that uh, you know paul paul commented to king agrippa uh, in fact it is uh, acts 26 there's a printing mistake in that first scripture there this so acts 26 verse 19 that he says therefore king agrippa i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision so he took it up as a command because it came from god so in the same way when god gives us a vision we know that he's directing us in that direction. Okay. And we have to take it up. In other words, in simple words, take it seriously. A command is always taken seriously. The great commission. It's not a great suggestion, people say. So it's something that every believer needs to do. Share the faith. Go make disciples of others. So in the same manner, the vision is something that God has given to us as a command. And this command because it is from god we can rest assured that god backs us up or in other words it is an authorization we we have received an authorization from heaven so when we step out to do the things that god is calling us to do it will bring along a boldness a confidence a fearlessness because this life is from god and the purpose to live this life is being communicated through the vision that God has given us. And I'm holding on to that vision and I'm following that vision and I can be very bold because I have received the authorization from heaven to do what I am doing. Okay, so that's how the heavenly vision must be treated. It must be treated as a command. We must realize that it is an authorization so we can step out willingly and boldly to do what God is calling us to do. Then um, the person who receives the vision, that person becomes the vision bearer. So in the case of uh, Paul, the apostle, we know that God said that you are going to be an apostle to the Gentiles. So that was the vision which he was carrying in his heart, becoming an apostle to the Gentiles. So in other words, we can call him the vision bearer. Now, did the gospel go out to the Gentiles only through the life of Paul? No. God put other people in his life. There were lots of others who partnered together with him to serve that purpose of God. But there was a vision bearer in Paul. In the same way, God can give us different uh, dreams, ideas, vision. And that does not necessarily mean that it's only going to be me or you, one person fulfilling that vision. God can have others, several other people come alongside us to see that vision fulfilled. Okay. And when God wants to execute something on the earth, usually this is the way in which he works. Okay. God raises up a person. Now that person could be from a certain place, that person could be carrying a certain message in their hearts. So God raises up individuals who will heed the call of God and have the purpose of God accomplished. Now, can God do this through an angel? Can God do this you know, in some other uh, supernatural, fantastic way? Yes, he can. But that's not the general way in which God works. God works through people. So when God wants to execute something on the earth, usually it will come in like a vision or a stirring in somebody's heart. And that person will be the one who will be used to uh, release that purpose or you know that person will lead the execution of that purpose on the earth. So God generally works through a person and he stirs up people to fulfill his purpose. Yeah. And when he raises up a person, 
this could be a man or a woman uh, they follow after that specific mission which is put in their hearts they proclaim that specific message that god has put on their hearts they release that specific ministry that god has blessed them with and you know god entrust this person with more people god um, uh, entrust them with you could say all the means required the methods and the means required to carry out that purpose and for the glory of god so this is how god generally works so a vision is a divine command and an authorization uh, and you see how god is working right god is working through an individual or a person okay uh, so here in our in our notes we have the example of um, moses okay who was the person whom god raised to lead abraham's descendants out of egypt now god promised abraham i am going to do this but how could god do it without a person so god picked moses and moses was the individual through whom god actually led the children of israel out of egypt so god works through a person and they execute the purpose of god so we receive a god given vision um uh, and that vision is a command uh, it's an authorization what what else about the god given vision a god given vision uh, sometimes can be detected by the stirring in our hearts okay so that means that we we are passionate about something okay and you know we we care so much about a particular cause uh, uh, each one of us each one of us and generally generally you know if we are walking close to god and you know we're letting the holy spirit speak to our hearts we're aligned to the direction of the holy spirit we can be sure that you know these these stirrings are not uh, you know just some random uh, fleshly earthly stirrings but god chooses to put that stirring in our hearts you know and that ca that can be the way in which god is actually directing us so if you look at the life of moses um god all along you know all along moses had uh, um the freedom of his own people in his heart he just didn't know how to do it okay and then of course he made a mistake he tried to uh, uh, rescue an oppressed uh, israelite you no know, and un under the egyptians and he ended up murdering uh, an egyptian and because of that he had to uh, flee and and stay in the wilderness for a long time he didn't know how to do it but the stirring in his heart was that the people of israel should be free that they should uh, live without oppression okay so god can put a stirring in our hearts and we have to basically recognize that stirring and that's how it happened for moses he had this intention that he wants god's people to be free now another person in the bible uh, who was stirred up was nehemiah nehemiah chapter 1 when he heard about uh, the walls of jerusalem being broken uh, from verses 1 to 4 you see that he became very upset and there was a stirring in his heart okay the exact verse okay uh, all right so anyway when you read the the verses there you you understand that the message now this message could have gone to you know many exiles but it affected nehemiah in a particular way and he was so upset that we read he 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 fasted he mourned for many days you know he was praying to god uh, about this situation of the walls of jerusalem being broken so it came about as a stirring in nehemiah's heart so what are we saying basically we are saying pay attention to the stirring that god has put in our hearts now this can be in various forms we are talking about kingdom building so some of us maybe with regard to the the local church we have a stirring in our hearts to raise up a strong local church strong in the word strong in the spirit right um, uh, well organized 
maybe we are passionate about that and we want to see uh, that kind of a work accomplished on the earth now for others of us you know today we were talking about some causes you know the unborn child or uh, maybe you you are passionate about justice or, or some of us we could be passionate about creativity you know different things that god puts inside our hearts and usually the god given vision uh, it is connected to that stirring so we have to pay attention you know god never uh, like it it's not a waste the experiences that we go through and uh, you know the the way in which god directs us even taking thoughts from that experience and directing us you know for our future to make things better so god can put a cause in our hearts so he can put a stirring in our hearts and we have to be careful to pay attention to that stirring and uh, our god given vision can be in that direction okay coming to the next thought here about the god given vision the god given vision has an appointed time for initiation and execution we have seen this earlier when we talked about the mary miracle we'll look at it a little more here there is a passage given from acts chapter 7 verses 17 and 20 can somebody please read this it's in our notes and um, i am on page 33 page 33 bottom yeah at 7 17 and 20 yes but when the time chronos of the promise drew near which god had sworn to abraham the people grew and multiplied in egypt at this time kairos moses was born and was well pleasing to god and he was brought up in his father's house for 3 months okay thank you anita uh, so in this passage you know we we see those uh, greek words chronos and kairos so basically god had told abraham that after 400 years people your descendants like they will move out of egypt so the passage of time is what we call as chronos but the fullness of time we saw in galatians 4 4 in the fullness of time meaning it is a god appointed time and it's a very strategic time in the calendar of god okay so that is called as the kairos that is called as a kairos now god had promised abraham that the people are going to be released from egypt and for about 400 years uh, you know at the end of those 400 years it was supposed to happen okay that is understood but even during that phase you know uh, we we read here that at this time or at the appointed time or more specifically at the kairos moment remember we said for a god given vision usually god works through a person so god needed an individual to cause this exodus to happen and it was moses who had this purpose on his life and he was born at the god appointed time or the kairos moment and it was well pleasing to god and he was brought up in his father's house for 3 months so the life of moses was being shaped equipped prepared to fulfill what god had promised abraham but this happened at the god appointed time or the kairos time or in other words as we saw in galatians 4:4 the fullness of time so what are we saying god can give us a vision in this case abraham in his lifetime in genesis 15 god already told him this is going to happen but then you know isaac had to be born and the descendants had to uh, come forth and they had to go under egypt so the chronos took its time and at the fullness of time or the kairos moment of god god did what he spoke so in the same manner in our lives we could say that i already know what god is doing through my life um, this is the vision that god has given me and we may be holding on to that and wondering god why why isn't it happening the way you told me that it would we have to wait on the lord 
for the kairos moment so in the fullness of time suddenly some doors are opened uh you know you experience a certain anointing it's those kairos moments and we could get discouraged thinking nothing's happening right but how does god work yes the chronos has to to take its time but god works in kairos moments okay or the kairos you could say a moment or it could be a season of our lives so kairos season and that's how god initiates and executes the vision so what are all the things that tend to align during the kairos season maybe to fulfill our vision we we are the vision bearer but there are some other people who need to come alongside and so far that hasn't happened so god may be preparing right putting those people in our lives putting them in their places and orchestrating the whole plan and purpose together with them so external there are there could be some external things that need to line up that is could be people okay so the right people need to come into the scene or the place right so maybe god may be wanting to release a revival on a particular city and the, and and that place needs to be prepared you know, through intercession through you know the right uh, uh, the right people of god coming into that city and serving ministering the word so so many things are taking place in that uh, you know in preparation to that region being prepared for what god really wants to release there so uh, or an individual you know you have a call of god on your life and you're thinking this is how you are going to minister but it's not happening where you are god may take you to another place okay and maybe that is where he wants to release that ministry through your life so god is aligning he's aligning people place okay uh, or it could be the personal things that concern us maybe as a couple you know uh, god has called you to go and plant a church somewhere but it's just the season of your life right now maybe finances are not in order or uh, you know you're very young children and you have to take care of them the kind of time that you want to set aside to do the ministry that's not happening you know so there are so many personal things in the seasons that we are going through that are not aligning to what you want to step out with so there are all these external things right that need to line up and in the kairos season or the kairos moments even the external things somehow they they seem to be like wow perfect i have i have the team that i need to step out with i am in the city where i need to uh, proclaim the gospel and in my personal life yeah we are in a place where we can manage right uh, to do this ministry so externally certain things may need to align and when in the kairos time they align uh, so we must let god you know have that uh, time of preparation and not not get all um, you know hassled about yeah i want to do it but it's not happening it's not happening maybe it's not the right season yet okay now internally these were the external things that needed to line up internally now god uh, god is not in a hurry okay to work through us internally maybe there are heart issues that god is still dealing uh, with in our in our lives it it could be pride it could be selfish ambition you know it it could be other things that you know god really wants us to mature from uh, or we could be struggling with relationships we really don't know how to deal with people uh, always getting into conflict or not able to you know work together as a team so maybe god is is working on all those internal challenges uh, that we may have our maturity right our development it could be that in in our personal lives you know we we have some uh, issues it's still not in order like you know some disciplines we are not we are not okay uh, god may be just helping us and saying okay you know i need you to set all these things right because once you step out once you uh, take on this responsibility you have to keep moving forward you know then there's no time to come back and correct all these things so put it in order or uh, you know it it could be about um, us having issues with faithfulness or or having a, a humble and a servant heart right while doing the ministry or uh, our character we have we have still not 
invested in developing ourselves in christ like character so these could all be the internal issues and what god is really doing is yes externally as we are praying trusting god taking the right steps externally things are orchestrating themselves in the right manner but even internally you know god is letting us go through that preparation time and preparing us for that kairos moment so when the kairos time comes we hopefully are ready to step out okay um yeah and uh, there is a there is a passage in the bible it talks about the sons of issachar okay uh, and these people apparently they were very sensitive and they understood times and seasons so they had the understanding of times it says so in the same way every vision bearer must have understanding of times like okay is it kairos yet or am i still i need to prepare for something and when the kairos moment comes basically you know you are ready to step out and you're re ready to launch out and do what god is calling uh, uh, you to do so that is some insight about the timing the kairos timing okay let's go further talking about a god given vision uh, this next section says that a vision requires preparation okay and sometimes this is not uh, talked about uh but you know it's it's really important and through every season that we go through in our lives god is preparing us and we must receive what god is doing in our hearts and our lives so god might be clarifying the vision you know we might have just a piece of the puzzle but as we are going through life doing what god has called us to do faithfully right now god might add to it and give us a, a clarity he might help us develop the skills that we need uh to serve okay uh help us move in the gifts of the spirit spiritually become deeper gain more understanding wisdom knowledge and all of that so nothing is really disconnected we might look at our lives and say god you know you have called me to do uh you know something amazing but what am i doing now it's not at all related like if you think about um, william carey um he was a cobbler okay so what is the connection you're a cobbler and you know finally god uses him as the father of modern missions what can god teach uh, someone from you know making shoes we don't know god has his own ways and we might think that god god will just go and take somebody out of bible college final year and that's the only preparation that individual needs to be the father of modern missions but hey god has you know his deeper insights so we can question god and say god you know you want me to serve you in this manner why is it that in my life you know i'm still here doing this job so i'm just telling you about disconnected seasons right that i'm sure uh, even you have been through times like this but god has his ways and nothing is wasted and everything is part of preparation so what we will do we have very little time left uh, i i will just pause here uh, in the next class we will look at the preparation time in the lives of uh, some you know wonderful people of god in in the bible and we'll see how in each one of their lives they went through the way we go through some seasons and don't understand why god would have us go through that they went through seasons but everything was actually used right for uh, uh god to release that vision through their lives so i'm just going to pause here if at all you have any comments any thoughts let's let's discuss that in the next couple of minutes and we are closing yeah okay great i think uh, uh maybe uh, all all this information is sinking in uh, so that's also good you could probably just go and uh, read the notes and we can connect next week and we will pick up from where we have stopped we are in chapter 4 uh, we will talk about preparation god given vision requiring preparation okay awesome okay so yeah we are done then for today's class and i would like to request somebody to please pray and then we wrap up abraham is it possible for you to pray Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. 
All right, let's pray. Precious Father, we thank you for such an awesome day. We thank you for all that we have learned. Father, our hearts were open, our minds were open to receive your word. Father, we pray that even as we practice your word in our individual houses, Father, give us the grace, give us the strength to endure to the end. Father, we've learned about Carol's moments. Father, let at the time of at the time of our manifestation, we will never miss it. Father, we thank you for every student here and every student that you've called into your ministry, that your faithfulness will be part of us, that we are going to be faithful and work hard until your coming. Father, we thank you for our lecturers and all the people that are involved in this college. Thank you for giving them the grace and the strength also to endure. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abraham. That was good. Okay. So, yes, God bless you, everyone. See you again this week in the local church class. Bye for now. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Purple Thank really you. suits you. Purple. Yeah. What, Purple. Anita? Purple color really suits you, ma'am. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. You too. You too. Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye, everyone. God bless.